everybody, happy Mother's Day. What a beautiful day to see so many gorgeous women this morning and men, nice to see you. And if you join us online, then hi, we're so glad you're here. Have you guys been enjoying the sun this week? What a beautiful change, right? It's been amazing. You know, we have a great Sunday morning lined up for you and we're so glad you're here. But I wanna start off this morning praying for the mothers and for the women in the house this morning. So if you all wanna stand with me and at home, you can join in. And you know, Mother's Day is so fantastic for so many people, but equally it can be a difficult time. It can be a sad day for some people. So we just wanna acknowledge that as well this morning. So I'm gonna read this prayer to you and with you, if you'll join me in it. Thank you for the mothers in our lives. Thank you for their love, faithfulness, and sacrifice. Thank you for their patience and their encouragement. Thank you for those who love and uphold mothers, whether that's friends, family, or partners. Today, we ask for comfort for those who find Mother's Day difficult, those who are grieving the loss of their mothers or mothers are far away, mothers who long to hold their children today but sadly can't women longing to become mothers and those who have difficult relationships with their mothers father you are el roy the god who sees me and today women may you all know that god sees you he knows you and he loves you completely should we celebrate this morning I love you women, let's worship together and let's have a great morning. I say give up.
of course we'll have you back up on your feet in a minute you know this week we actually had the sweetest delivery a lady rang the offices I'm on the staff here so she rang the offices and she said um sadly my husband's passed away and he has bags and bags of amazing books would you like them so we were like okay so we accepted this and we went through it and wow there was some amazing books in there, untouched, brand new, sometimes like three of the same one, amazing books about God, Bibles, study Bibles, all sorts. So we did not want to keep that to ourselves. So if you are here in the arena, after the gathering, just at the back wall, there is a book, a table full of books, and they are free for you to take. So if you were looking for a new Bible, maybe you want a study Bible, or you want to read some amazing books, we've been through them, and they're free for you. So we want to make sure that you make use of that afterwards and have a little look. And you know, this morning, we're so glad that you're all here. Um, and, but you know, in particular, we're celebrating women today. And um, in our pre like gathering um, little rally, we have Rachel, who's on the message today. She's gonna be great. Rachel asked us to say one woman in our life that has impacted us so much. And you know, some people were saying the relatives, some people were saying the mothers. Then there was um, three women in there who actually have all led kids' church. So there was Lindsay, Jane, and Siobhan. And they each said one another that a huge inspiration and a huge person of faith in mothering them, their experience has been each other. And I just want to um, highlight to you this morning that mothering isn't always about birth. Mothering isn't about growing something inside of you and giving birth to it. It's actually w giving out what is inside of you, not necessarily what grows there. So th today, if you do that, then you have a mother in spirit. So whether you have a child next to you, whether you have a child in your heart that you wish was next to you, or whether you don't want children, let me tell you, you have a mother in spirit. And let, I hope that this morning we can access that and find out a bit more. And I think we will with Rach. But for now, I would like you to give it up for a wonderful woman in question just before, the wonderful Jane Moore. Let's be welcome onto the stage. Look at her. Jane is just going to tell us a little bit about some exciting things. Yep. Go ahead, Jane. Oh, good morning, everyone. Um, so in recent months, uh, it's been great to see so many new faces. And uh, we just want to say we're, that you are, we're so glad that you are here and that you are so welcome and that we want you to be part of our church family and feel that you belong. I understand this is a big space and you have come into a big space where you may not know many people, but we do want you to make friends. We want you to get connected. Um, and we have so much going on in the life of our church that we want you to be a part of. So why not introduce yourself, say hello, come speak to me after the gathering. Um, there is the uh, hub, which is now outside in the avenue anyone will have a chat and give you information there and we've also got the welcome team all around the back of the arena and they'd love to speak to you and uh, introduce themselves to you and help in any way um, but watch this space because over the coming weeks we want to share with you some more things that will be happening how you can get involved in the life of our church so thank you that's great oh she's going give it up for her no that's good that's good thanks Jane and if you are here now in this room, if you were here last week, then you know we gave you a chance to go and say hi to someone. Well, guess what? Your chance has arisen again. All the introverts sink slowly into the seats and all the extroverts jump out at the exciting chance. But we would love you to go and say hi to someone. And literally, guys, I'm giving you two minutes and then I'm going to speak again. So I want you to listen after. But right now, go say hi to somebody and then I'll bring you back together in just a couple of minutes.
Okay. Do you guys want to find your way back to your seats? I hope you've met someone very interesting. Maybe made a new pal. Or maybe you hid on your seat. You know, also fine. Someone might have come to find you out. Well, guys, you know, since it is Mothering Sunday, we wanted to do a couple of inclusions. And, you know, traditionally, Mothering Sunday is all about, you know, children saying how much they love the mums, which we love and is also to come. However, as a mother myself, the truth is there's some confessions. Here are my confessions in the words of Usher. I have some confessions. I am not perfect, believe it or not. So we asked some of the mums on Instagram, and so we text some of you to tell us your secret confessions of a mother. And then we asked our staff this week, we went around our staff with a camera and filmed some of them saying your confessions out loud. So mothers, you're not perfect, that's fine. You are still human. So enjoy confessions of a mother. I once spent an hour with my son looking for the chocolate I'd eaten the night before. There's no bit of in the box of our cereal. It's just a massive chocolate stash. <laughs> I used to fast forward all the sad parts of films like The Lion King and Bambi. It was only when they got older that they realised they'd missed huge chunks of film. I often hide in different places in the house, not to play hide and seek, just to literally have a few minutes to myself before I'm found. When I'm busy, sometimes I say, who's here? Who's here at the window? Who's here at the door? But I'm just trying to get something done. So they run to the window and see, but there's no one there. I just need time to focus. I tell my kids the ice cream man has no ice solids when the music plays. I pretend to be asleep when the kids shout in the night, so my husband has to go to them. On Sundays, I tell my kids it's bedtime an hour earlier, so I get a whole extra hour to myself. Oh, We all know we do it, and it's okay. It's just kind of like a secret code. Now, guys, I've got some very excited but kind of maybe shy, although to be honest, if they're doing this, maybe not shy, children behind stage, and they want to come and say something to their mums, uh, or their, um, well, sorry, actually, not just the mums, because, you know, it takes a village. It's not just the mums that do this, so. And also, I'm one of the mums, and I was like, you can't say anything about me, because I'm next here. Okay, so let's welcome on our children. <laughs> Give them a big cheer, come on. Come on, come on, don't be shy. Okay, stand here. Aren't they lovely? So, these lovely children have something to say to the women in their lives. So they're gonna go up to the microphone one by one and tell you a reason why they love them. And I want you to give them the most amazing cheer after each one. Are we good? Okay, do you wanna go first? I love my mummy because she's kind and a good baker. Come on! Well done, mummy. Kind and a good baker. I'll be coming round to yours. I love my mummy because she helps me when I'm hurt. Oh. And if you know Reuben, he's hurt quite a lot, so that is the kind of mummy needs. I've got my head open four times. Okay. <laughs> and Naya? I love my, my mummy. Uh, because she, because I love to go on the swings and, and, and I want to cook with my mommy. <gasps> wow, that's amazing. Okay, good day. I like my grandma because she, because she makes me treasure hunts. And I like my nonna because she has a big garden and I get to play in it. Wow, that's great! I love my aunties because they are sassy, <laughs> funny and cheeky. They are! I 
could confirm that they are. And the lovely man. You're a bit taller, so let's do that for you. I love my mum because her personality and how she loves my family and I. Wow. Can we give it up for these brave children? Well done, guys. You can go backstage now. Okay, that's amazing. How sweet. How sweet. And also, we didn't practice that at all, so that went much better than I hoped. Yeah, we're going to carry on worshipping with the band, guys, are we? Apologies. Are we, Ema? No. Okay. Set your eyes on the screen then. He's going to be so mad at me for that. It's sorry, Ema. This Sunday gathering is only one small part to who we are as a church. There's so much more you can get involved in. Community groups, small gatherings scattered all around Wigan, centred around an activity. For example, sewing, knitting, tech, or even walking. If they're not for you, why not start one? Head to the hub or visit our website so you can register. If you've got a child under the age of two and they're not quite old enough for our kids' church, don't worry, we've got a space just for you. The gallery is a safe place with soft toys, feeding areas, and also a live link to the gathering. So if you need any help getting there, don't worry, the welcome team are on hand to direct you. We are a host of generosity, and you are free to give today, whether that's a tithe or a generous offering. You can do this through your mobile banking app, online giving, or if you're here at the edge, with the giving envelope. Whichever way you choose to give, why not make it easier by setting up a standing order? If you're a UK taxpayer, did you know that we get an additional 25p for every pound that you give? Be sure to use the gift aid feature, as this really helps us out with no extra cost to you. Also, if you're giving towards your First Roots pledge, please use the reference FF22. This helps our finance team process the money to the right place. A reminder that you have until Sunday the 3rd of April to fulfil your pledge, and if you need any help, then don't hesitate to contact our finance team. Lastly, don't forget to follow us on all of our socials. They include Live Free, Kids Church, and the Community Grocery, and of course, don't forget the official TCC page. But that's enough from me. Let's carry on creating an irresistible environment where people find their way back to God.
great to be here. Happy Mothering Sunday. Are we all well? Good. I um, just nearly forgot that I needed to get on stage then. <laughs> um, it's quite common. I was just stood down there and then I realized, oh, I should probably go backstage. Um, in the vein of making confessions, um, I decided that I need to make some confessions as a mom as well. Is that okay? You're like, give me the good ones. Well, I feel like somebody already stole mine. So my first one was hiding from my kids. Is this not just a standard thing for parents with young kids? No, just me? No, like going to my room and hiding, not, not playing hide and seek, although my kids, literally, the second I leave the room, my kids are like, mommy, or if they're being rude, mom spaghetti. I literally, my, my daughter actually calls me mom spaghetti. It's only funny to a certain generation of people, but she literally calls me mom spaghetti. Um, my second one, I have more than this, is just basically eating any sweets that they get from parties or cakes. Because also when your kids are invited to as that many parties, my, my daughter is in reception of primary school. Um, and I've just realized that they do a party every weekend. I'm not a fan of kids' parties. Anybody else? You're going to think I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not that maternal. I'll just tell you that now. But I don't like kids' parties. Sorry, but they're all right. If, if, if there's adults there, they're all right. But they always get so many sweets and cake. And then afterwards, my kids forget they've got sweets and cake. Me and Dan at night when we need a snack, sweets and cake. Okay. Um, and then the third one, which I actually feel really kind of guilty about now, is I tell my kids it's not the morning when it is the morning. <laughs> I guess I'm essentially confessing that I lie to my children. Um, so we have, if you have young children, you've probably seen these. That they're like a little clock that changes from blue to yellow when it's, when it's the morning. And so my kids are not super early risers, actually. And me, me and Dan maybe are. But what I would like to say is, if I'm getting up early, it's because I want to be by myself. <laughs> it's because I've got something to do. It's because I want a coffee by myself, or I want to read by myself, or I want to have a minute. So sometimes my kids will be like, Mommy, at 6 o'clock. I'm like, baby, it's not time to get up yet, but I'm downstairs like brewing a coffee. Um, and sometimes they catch me out, but most of the time they don't. And they're not in here now, so um, they'll find out soon. Um, anyway, um, so happy Mothering Sunday. We are 
pleased for you to be here. My name's Rachel. Sorry, I didn't kind of say that. And I just want to say if you are here visiting, if you've been dragged by your own mum or um, you're being a dutiful niece or nephew, um, or if you're here because you're part of this community, we just want to welcome you. Um, and you know, today we really feel is a celebration, not just of women who have physically birthed children, um, but of the mothering spirit. And, and Hannah, who was leading us before, alluded to this. There, there is a lot to be said for that motherly spirit that I believe is innate within women. It's the way God's designed us, that there's something about us that is there to help people be seen. You know, I asked a couple of the team this week, what do, when they think about motherhood or when they think about a mothering spirit, what do they think? And they said, it's just that people, they help people to feel seen and to feel known. And so um, it's not really a change of status, maybe when you have a baby or you foster a child or you adopt a child, but there's something within girls, I believe, and women that has been kind of designed and put there by God is to help people feel seen. And so it's almost something that needs activating sometimes. Um, I really realize this. I have two children. Um, I had my first child at 28. But long before that, I can kind of see how some of those characteristics of that mothering spirit had been growing in me long before I was ever pregnant with my daughter. And I really believe that that's part of God's design. You know, in the same way that you may notice in a child or it, you may have noticed in yourself, when you were younger, you had a flair for something and perhaps a parent or somebody picked up on it. And, you know, there's discipline and hard work in the midst of that. But I really believe that's kind of what this is like as a mother in spirit. You've got to kind of awaken it. And there's something in there that is to be a gift to the world and we choose how to use it. But if you're here and you're a person of faith, to be able to use that to bless the world, whether that's your natural family, whether that's colleagues, whether that's younger brothers, sisters, people that God has put around you, um, it's been there and it kind of has to be activated, if that makes sense. And it may show itself in many different ways. And so what I want to do uh, right at the start, I'm going to read to you a scripture from the New Testament. And this was, it's in a book called One Timothy. And it's written by a guy called Paul. He's an apostle, wrote a lot of the New Testament of the Bible. And he's speaking to um, his disciple, essentially one of his young followers. Um, and his name's Timothy. And this is just such a, it is such a small scripture. There's probably nothing earth shaking about it. Um, but women, it feels like women are rarely mentioned in the Bible. So when they are mentioned, my ears prick up anyway. But I love this scripture. It's one of my favorites. And it's one that I wanted to bring to you today. When we think about that motherly spirit um, and being able to release that and activate that. And so I'm going to read it. It's 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 5. Um, and it says this. He's talking to Timothy. Paul's talking to Timothy. And he says, I remember your genuine faith. For you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. So you might think, well, right, okay. <laughs> he's just noticing something. What I love about this is Paul is noticing something in Timothy that somehow he must have known Lois and Eunice. Um, they're quite interesting names. Lois and Eunice that he's observed that has been handed down generationally from the grandmother to the mother and then to the son, Timothy. It's something special. And I guess my challenge today and my kind of question is what is the inheritance that we're going to give, not just to our children, but to those that are around us? Because the inheritance of Lois and Eunice handed down was a genuine faith. It's quite interesting that he, 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 he noticed it like it has specific characteristics, like it's something that can be seen in this young boy, Timothy. They were noticeable to him. And so out of the many things we may plan I guess, to hand to our children or to those we feel responsible to. How amazing that if we can pass them something that's genuine and something that has a legacy that outlasts us, that it actually impacts not just that individual, but those people around us. And I guess that's kind of what I want to touch on today is that in motherhood, a lot of it is consistent and it's unseen um, and it can just feel like hard work sometimes. But that's the stuff that creates something that can be handed to another generation. Um, and as a person of faith, I want to hand something, not just to my children, but to those around me that, it, that way outlasts me, 
that's not just, it's good for a season, but when I'm gone or I'm not here anymore, I'm, I'm not around or I move location, that it actually lives on in the people that are around me. And so there's three things I just want to pick up on, you know, even just from that scripture, if we want to hand something of worth to the next generation or to those younger than us or those around us, again, not just in a context of our blood relations or maybe children that we've given birth to, it takes three things, I, I kind of realized, in parenting, but especially with that mothering spirit. And I'm convinced, even in these three things, that it is always worth it, whether for our natural children or whether for people that we just kind of invest into or come alongside or show love to or invite into our family, that I am convinced it is absolutely worth it. Um, completely honest moment. On Monday night, <laughs> I was having a bit of a, I, f I feel like if you're a parent in here, you know this, I was having a bit of a moment of, why, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> and you can laugh, but it wasn't funny at the time. Um, it was kind of one of those, like, I adore my children, I love my children, but I'd, I'd been having a really bad day with them. And so Monday night, I'm literally crying to Dan, like, but what, why did I do this? Like, this was my choice, and this was my fault, and uh. And I was having a bit of a difficult time with it. And you know, what I just realized in that moment, in the middle of some of the difficulties of having that mothering spirit, or that motherly spirit, or making sacrifices for others, that I'm absolutely convinced that it is always worth it, irrespective of outcome, irrespective of how life goes, that actually there's something within us that longs to give because that's the way God designed us. And so the first thing I kind of noticed, um, if we're going to hand something of worth to the next generation, one thing we've got to build, and I think women just exude this anyway, is sacrifice. Um, as I said, I have two natural children. The first thing I sacrificed for them was my body. Um, and you might think that it is a joke if you're a male in here. No, no, it's not a joke. Um, I carried my children. I was very sick in both of my pregnancies, and I had healthy children, thank God. Um, but then I continued to sacrifice my body as I fed them and did everything else for them and still lose sleep. Guys, I prematurely aged for my children. I, I mean, you, you can probably see under these bright lights, I'm getting some serious wrinkles, um, and I'm not that old. I definitely aged a lot in the last five years. But we make sacrifices, don't we? And whether that's our plan or our time uh, or foregoing food sometimes, um, finances, sacrifice, resource, energy, sacrifice is part of raising people, isn't it? It's raising humans. It's part of it. But sometimes sacrifice feels painful. Sometimes sacrifice can be difficult um, and it can be hard. And I guess that's what I was feeling on Monday night is like, this just feels too much. But I was reminded even in that moment as I began, began to think about uh, my children, other, others that I've sacrificed for, I felt God remind me it is always worth it, even when it's hard. And that might be a sacrifice of time, um, of thought, of prayer for someone else, making room in a schedule. Really, sacrifice can be painful, but I, I, guess, I guess as the motherly spirit, what we really sacrifice is comfort. <laughs> What we choose to sacrifice, sacrifice over and over again is our comfort. And if you're in here and you're a person of faith, that's actually the call that God has put on us to follow him. It is a sacrifice of comfort. It's a sacrifice of leaving behind things that feel safe and things that feel okay and things that don't disturb us to follow someone who actually is pretty radical. And actually, even though in that um, discomfort, that can be difficult, it can be challenging, you know, we can lose sleep, all of those things that come with it, that there is a joy waiting on the other side that is always, always worth it. And so sacrifice has got to be part of what we hand to the next generation. It's kind of part and parcel of being a mum or being a parent or being someone who reaches out to others. It's just part of it. The second thing is this, is faithfulness. Um, when I think about parenting, um, or I think about just, just people who give their lives for others. Faithfulness is the thing where it's not necessarily a book will ever be written about your efforts, um, or that someone will talk about it, or that every time you do something, it will be appreciated. You know, for the most part, that's just not real life. And we love it when we're appreciated, and we've got to make more of an effort to do it. But the act of being faithful and continuing things to sacrifice for others, sometimes it feels like a bit of a thankless task. Uh, and it feels just a bit like, 
you just keep going. You know, um, I, I love reading to my children. It's one of my favorite things. It's my, like my favorite part of the day. Um, but, you, you know, when I'm reading to my oldest daughter and she's like picking her nose or just, just doing something else, you know, you're just like, yeah, I'm not here for the good of my health right now. You can feel a little bit like, why, why am I doing this? But the, the thing and the thing, the motivator, the thing that can continues to propel me to keep doing that is simply because I love her and I want the best for her. And I know if I read to her and give her an imagination and stories and words, not just reading her books, but helping her to understand the world bigger than just mom, dad, and two kids and everything else, that it births something in her that is, is something of a legacy that, that will live on with her. And I guess in part due to the fact that that's what my mum did with me as well. And so it can feel underappreciated. It can feel highly frustrating. But you know, the work of showing up, being available, being present, getting kids out of trouble sometimes, um, especially when they're older. I can see this is where so much women reflect the faithfulness of, the faithfulness of God. God is faithful to us and has been faithful to us in spite of our response, right? And, and I guess that's where parenting comes into its own is it can feel like hard work, but that faithfulness, it shows something to the world of God's love and faithfulness to us. There are no guarantees with our kids. There are no guarantees with people we love and we care for like our own children that they will necessarily live a full free life. We do our best to set them up for that but there are no guarantees. And so sometimes our kids turn away from the thing we want them to turn towards. Sometimes they uh, choose a way that we think, uh, like we, we taught you everything against that. <laughs> there are no guarantees. But that faithfulness and that faithful work is something special in life. And it doesn't just turn away. Scripture talks about children not just turning away from what we've built into them. And I think it's so important to remember that that faithfulness means something. And so it's more than about the outcome. It's about showing up and turning up. And you know, when we think about that in the context of others, um, even when we love other people like our brothers, sisters, aunties, people who become like our family, maybe who are not our blood relations, it can feel frustrating sometimes when there's a breakdown in relationship or there's a difficulty there. But I want to encourage you that faithfulness of showing up and being present matters. It matters. The third thing that I was going to say is if we're going to hand something of worth to the next generation, if we want to hand legacy to them, the natural thing is responsibility, taking responsibility. Um, I don't always love that word. I don't always like being the responsible adult in the room. In fact, I feel like I'm, most of the times I'm not the responsible adult in the room. That's okay. Um, but I feel part of that motherly spirit is taking responsibility. It's seeing something and addressing it. It's seeing someone and reaching out to them. It's seeing something that needs to be done and knowing that there's a responsibility incumbent on you to do something about it. And when we think about the kind of inheritance we want to hand to the next generation, that's, that's a sense of responsibility of what do we want to see for the next generation? What do we want to see for them in faith, in justice, in provision, in friendship? What, how do we want to teach them to handle things? Because when I kind of put the mirror up to myself, I look back and say, hey, I'm responsible for doing everything I can to make that happen. Um, kind of, we're going to pray in a minute, but I, I just want to tell you a little story. I, I've been thinking a lot this week about um, women, women who have been an impact in my story, um, and in, especially in my faith, my journey of faith. Um, and I thought about someone, I don't know if she's here today, actually. She's an amazing woman, and she used to work with my mom many, many years ago. My mom was 19. Um, she was not, not a person of faith, and this lady she worked with was just a friend. You know, she's 10, 12 years older than her. Just a friend to her, loved her. They had a great time together. And but this person was a person of faith herself. Um, and she just simply lived an open life before my mom. She was authentic. She was real. She still is, 100%. She's too real sometimes. She's too real sometimes. You're laughing because you know what I'm going to say. Um, she's borderline savage, but she is an amazing woman. And actually, it was through her that my mom came to faith. And so I was reflecting on the power of 
just generational impact of things we do and places we are, conversations we have that we sometimes just feel don't amount to anything, but, but they really do in time. And I was thinking about her. Her name is Joan Timpany. And she's, I don't know if she's here today, but she's part of this church community. Amazing woman. And, and I can see through her, you know, I have three sisters as well, and we know people. Her, even her just looking out for my mom, and having that kind of motherly spirit to my mom, just as a younger colleague that she worked with, actually impacted my entire life <laughs> in a strange way, completely my entire life and the life of my family. And really, that's what, as we kind of come to a point where we're going to pray, that's what I want to see for this community, is that the things that we do, the things that we say, the decisions we make, that we'd start to see that they have such a greater impact than we could ever imagine. And it, to the point where it might even impact a family and a generation. And, you know, the thing about Joan is she doesn't have any natural children of her own. It's not like she learned how to be a mom when she had children. But let me tell you, in a spiritual sense, she has many, many children. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Say, maybe not many people in this room would know her. Quite a few would know her. And the beauty of that and what that means, that, that's the mother in spirit. That's what I'm talking about. It's something that needs to be activated within us as women. Sometimes it's not all about just parenting young kids or parenting grown-up kids. It's just about recognizing the thing, the mandate that God has placed on us just to see people sometimes, just to know them, just to reach out to them, just to back them and be with them. And so what I want us to do, just kind of right as I bring this message to a close, if you're in here and you're comfortable too, and you're a woman, no matter what age you are, you're a woman or a girl, um, I would just ask if you're able to, if you could just stand up. I'm not going to ask you, you can stand up, ladies, if you can. Well, yeah, that's it, come on. <laughs> nice cheering, Stefan. We'll cheer you on, it's okay. Yeah, and... I'm, I'm really, I'm not going to embarrass you in any way. I'm not going to call you to the front. What I want is for the men around you, if guys, if you are of faith and you feel comfortable to do this, we're going to pray for the women and the girls that are around us. Um, and I'm kind of going to lead us in a prayer, but if you feel comfortable to, I want you to pray for them. I'm going to ask guys if you, and there's nothing weird about this, is just like reach out your hand just as a kind of I'm with you. You don't need to touch these women unless they are your wife, please. Um, but you can kind of reach out your hand. And I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And here's really what I want to pray for. I just want to, we want to respect and honor these women for who they are. But what I want to pray that that motherly spirit that is within each one of you would just begin to awaken and would just begin to show itself. This is not about being maternal. It's not about being a certain way or fitting a certain gender role. It's just about being true to who God created you to be and releasing that in a normal way in everyday life. For some of you, we'll be praying if you're weary, if you've had enough, um, if you are longing for something, that's what we're going to pray for. And so guys, I'm going to lead us. And then men, if you're happy to, if you will pray as well, because I believe there is power in prayer. The reason many of us are even stood in this room today is because somebody prayed for us faithfully. Quite often a woman, I've got to be honest, there's been faithful, faithful prayers to the point of us being stood here and having an opportunity to know freedom and to know this God that we serve. So come on, let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for the amazing girls and women that stand in this room now. God, for those who are online and who are not with us. God, I pray for them if they are weary. God, if they are fed up. God, if they are longing to be a natural parent. God, if they are grieving today, Father, because they are absent of a mother figure or their mom is not here anymore. God, for those who are younger, God, and are still figuring out who they are. God, for every woman in this room, God, I pray for that innate strength that you've placed within them to see others to know others, God, to, to draw things out of children and teenagers and adults. God, I pray if that has been dormant, God, would you awaken it now? God, where it's already been awakened, God, would you add strength? God, would you add courage? Would you add power? God, would you add boldness, Father? 
God, for those who are standing that don't know you yet, God, would you just extend your grace and love to them today? God, that they would know you. God, where they feel they're not enough, God, where we feel like our parenting's never good enough, or it's second rate, or we're not as good as such a body, or we need to be more this, or we need to be more that. God, I pray in this moment, your grace would just fill us, Lord, that we would, ex we would experience your knowledge, your goodness, your wisdom. God, and more than anything, your affirmation. God, that we know that we belong to you. Father, you've brought us even here today, God, for a, for a reason. It's not for nothing. And that our prayer and our efforts and our work, God, and even who we are, God, it matters and it means something. God, help us to be those who hand something of worth to the next generation. In your name we ask. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can all stand now if you're able to. The band are going to lead us. Um, and we're going to worship together. We're going to sing together. Thank you. Here we go. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lift your name, God. Lift your name, God. Yeah, yeah. Who are you saving? Isn't he wonderful? Sing.
we've talked about moms today and uh, we talked about how faithful they are and we've talked about how they see and you know the, the biggest thing for me today the most important thing actually any day is it's knowing that actually the source of faithfulness is God himself that many people in this room have responded to God not not because their life is perfect or because they've got it all together but because they've been able to respond to his love. And the truth is that God sees you. The, the thing that always amazes me is God sees you and he sees me fully, and yet he still loves us. He loves us and he loves you. And so we're going to create a moment. I'm going to pray because I know there are people in the room and maybe online today, you have never either experienced that love or you've never responded to this God we speak of. You know, God displayed his ultimate act of love through his son, Jesus. He lived fully God, fully man on this earth, but then was crucified as an innocent man so that he could take our wrongdoing, our brokenness, everything that would seek to, to peel us away from God, he took upon himself and died. And you know, the amazing thing is that he didn't just stay dead, but actually he was resurrected back to life so that we could have full freedom over death, freedom over sin, freedom over brokenness, freedom over everything that would seek to tear us away from a relationship with a loving, merciful God of justice, God of hope, yeah. God of truth. Yeah. And that's, you know, for me, that's the greatest gift we could ever give to the next generation, is a genuine faith, a robust faith that says, irrespective of what's going on in the world, of what's going on in culture. There is a God who knows you, he sees you, he loves you, and he's gonna call you this way to follow him and obey him because he is the designer, he's the master. He knows the way forward and he knows you and he loves you and he's for you. And so like, just de like Jesus did in the New Testament, he said, come and follow me. And many, many did. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pray now. And if that's you and you're saying, you know, I want to respond to that kind of a God. I want to respond to his love and I might not know everything. I might have some big questions. I might have some complications in life. Hey, welcome to, the, to all of us. You are welcome. And that's that song we've been singing about coming to an altar. It's just coming before God and saying, this is where I am. This is where I'm at right now. I'm coming before you, not hiding anything, but I'm coming before you in a, just an honest way saying, God, I'm here. And so if that's you in a minute when I've prayed, I'm just going to ask you after we've prayed, if you just pop your hand up. And I'm, not everybody's going to be looking around. I'm doing that to ask you to make a physical response to say, God, I'm here. Because he sees you, but it's helpful for me to see that so we can celebrate you as well. Is that okay? Okay, so let's pray together. Father, I thank you, God, that you love us. Your love is towards us. You are faithful to us. Father, and for anyone in this room today, God, who desires just to step towards you and to know you, and maybe even to follow you or to respond to your love, God, I pray right now you would do a divine exchange. God, that you would take the brokenness, God, the pain, God, any hurt, God, any disappointment, God, just anything that would seek to separate us from you, God, would you just remove it now, Father, your word says that if we believe that you are God and we confess that you are Christ, that you will forgive us, that you'll set us free and you'll give us freedom. And so that's our prayer this morning, God, for anyone who responds to you. God, may they know your love. May they know your freedom. God, would you give them wisdom? Would you help them to know, God, that you're here and you're present, God, and you're not just in a room, God, but you've gone before them. In your name, Lord. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, would you just be bold enough just to pop your hand up and pop it back down? Maybe, maybe that was for a first time or a second time. And you know, if, that's, if there's anyone in the room or if you respond and you don't want to put your hand up, that's fine. But um, if, if you do, it just means a team, one of our team can see you, they'll come and pray with you if that's helpful or give you a Bible. And if not, we're going to continue to celebrate and worship together. Okay. Okay, right, guys, let's give it up for anyone who has responded today. What an amazing decision. You know, it's, it's the first step of many, right?
But if you do want to see somebody after, you do want to chat to someone, and maybe you didn't pop your hand up, but you did want to speak to someone, we have an amazing welcome team who will hang around. They'll be available to pray. If you've come with someone, maybe tell the person that you've come with. Um, But the band are going to continue to lead us now. We're going to just have a moment where we just honor God, where we respond to his love, respond to his faithfulness. Thank you, guys. Be still and know that the Lord is in control. Be still, my soul. Stand and watch as giants fall. I won't be afraid. You are here. You silence all my fear. I won't be afraid. You don't let go. Be still, my heart, and I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid. still and trust that the Lord has said is done. Find rest, don't strive. Watch his faith and grace
surely love and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. And God, in return, in return, in return, I give you all the praise. Because you're on with it. Because you're on with it. We say, worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Yes, God. Worthy is your name. Jesus. It's better than that. We gotta lift up. Yeah. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve. Worthy is your name. As the glory fills this place, we will all deserve our friends. Cause you're the name above all names. You exalted now in the heavens. As the glory fills this place, you will all deserve our friends. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As the glory fills this place. Serve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name.
I never grew up in a Christian family or had Christian friends. I went through the early stages of my life very much a skeptic individual. It wasn't until I was in college in my late teenage years that I became good friends with someone who openly shared their faith in Jesus with me. When I finished college, I came to quite a low point in my life. There were a lot of things going on around me with close family members being ill. I wasn't at a place in my life that I wanted to be. And it just all took its toll on me. I began questioning a lot about my identity and worth, which led to a big impact on my mental health. I even had a period of, of self-harming. During this, this time of struggle, I was incredibly grateful for the, the friendship that I had with the individual that I just mentioned. He was there alongside me. He helped me in asking the right questions rather than questions that would harm me. Through a period of struggling to swallow my pride, I finally came to church with him, which was here at TCC. Here I encountered an environment which can only be described as coming home. As Jesus endured the sufferings of the cross, his arms were symbolically stretched out wide. I'm thankful that my Heavenly Father's arms are stretched out wide for me to run into and be welcomed home. Yeah. I received a realization that the sufferings that I went through were not worthy to be compared to the sufferings that Jesus went through for me and for us. I encountered his grace, his mercy, and his love for me. And that's how I experienced heaven in my heart. Woo! Amazing. That's amazing. You know, we want to invite you to our Easter Sunday. It's on Easter Sunday. Make sure you put it in your diaries. Make sure that you think about someone that you'd want to invite along. We have an amazing Sunday um, planned for you. So stay tuned for that. What a great Mothering Sunday we've had this morning. It has been fantastic. And I hope that you can enjoy the rest of your day, whatever you're doing. Uh, please don't forget that we have the table at the back with the books on. Please feel free to take any. If you've joined us online, we hope that you have a great day too. And also, these beautiful flowers that you see dotted around, you can take, but not the vases. So if you would like to take some flowers, feel free, but just please make sure you leave the vases. But have a fantastic day, have a fantastic week, and yeah, we will see you very soon. Thank you.